Today we're going to look at a local forest. Originally, much of the planet was covered in forest. We had the northern areas, the whole of Europe, almost covered in forest. The tropical rainforests around the middle. Nowadays, very little remains. Much of the rainforest in Africa has been felled and disappeared. And virtually all the forest in Europe has gone apart from a, a, a few small patches. Let's look at a really local forest, the New Forest, which has recently become a national park because it's so important. Again, much of that is not trees. We have trees here and here, but there are large areas of heathland there's also towns in the New Forest. There's Fording Bridge, there's Ringwood, Brockenhurst, Lindhurst. It's William, Duke of Normandy in France, invaded England on the 28th of September, 1066. He fought and defeated the King of England, Harold Godwinson, at the Battle of Hastings. We know him now as William the Conqueror, or King William I of England. We know what happened because he, when he got back, he got his people to make the story into a tapestry, a bit like a, a cartoon of pictures that you could follow to see the story of the invasion of England. As soon as he got here, he dished out bits of the country to his friends, but some parts he kept for himself. The new forest, or Nova Foresta as he called it, which had actually been a forest for thousands of years, so it wasn't new at all, became one of his hunting forests in 1079. This meant that it was subject to a new set of laws, the forest laws. The people who had lived there for generations suddenly were not allowed to hunt. They weren't allowed even to gather wood for their fires. Life became incredibly difficult. The whole existence of the forest was there just for the king to hunt, mainly deer. He even brought the fallow deer over himself and introduced them into the forest. They're there in profusion now. If you were even caught trying to worry the deer or hunt the deer, there were terrible punishments. You could have your eyes gouged out or your hands cut off or you could be executed. These were very difficult times. Over the centuries though, over the years, the people who lived in the forest gained commoners rights from the king. These included the right of pasture. You could let your ponies, horned cattle or donkeys loose to graze in the forest. And these you can see to this day, because if you own a property in the forest now, these rights still exist. The new forest pony is a particular type of pony, a particular breed, and they're all owned by individual people. They pay to keep their, their ponies looked after in the forest, and the verderers at the end of the year will cut a little niche in the tail to show that those ponies have been paid for. They're all rounded up around about September, October, and some of them are sold as riding ponies. You might have the right of mast or pannage. This means that you can let your pigs loose to eat the acorns in the autumn. This is very useful because acorns are poisonous to ponies, so it keeps the ponies healthy. You could have the right of fuel wood or estovers. In other words, you're allowed to go out into the common ground in the forest and collect firewood that's on the ground. You're not allowed to damage the trees, but anything that's on the ground you can use for your fire. You can have the right of pasture of sheep. Or you can have the right of common of marl. In other words, you're allowed to dig clay. 
Not all that important nowadays, but originally houses were made of clay and you could, uh, you'd have to dig it up to make your house. And another rite that's not used anymore is the rite of turbury, digging peat, digging that out of the ground so you can burn it on your fire. Peat is very rare now, so it's not something that people do. The forest isn't just trees. We've got woodland, and in the woodland you can have deciduous or evergreen trees. Deciduous trees lose their leaves in the winter, like the oak and the beech. Evergreen trees keep their leaves all year round, like holly. About 200 years ago, uh, pine trees were introduced to the forest as a quick growing tree that could be chopped down and used for wood. It only takes about 30 years to grow as opposed to 100 or so. In the woodland, you either have broadleaf trees like these or coniferous trees like these, trees that have cones with their seeds in. These are usually evergreen. They have needles as their leaves. But there is one tree that is deciduous and loses its needles in the winter, the larch tree. And there's heathland. Heathland is the open countryside that you see here. It's got heather and um, bracken often on it. And there's bog. Because much of the forest is clay, at the bottom of a dip in the ground, the water will collect. And over time, vegetation, plants will grow over the top of it. 80% of the lowland bog that exists in Europe is in the small area of the new forest. It's very, very fragile and very, very precious. Flora in the boggy area, flora is plants, can be very, very beautiful. We have cross-leaved heather here. This is a type of heather that likes to grow in wetter areas. It's called cross-leaved because the leaves go across the stem. The other type of heather that you see in the new forest is the ling heather, and this likes slightly drier areas. There's also trees that like wetter areas. Alder trees grow along the side of the streams where it's all mushy and muddy. My favourite plant though is the sundew. This grows in the bog. Can you see it's got little bits of sugar on its leaves which attract the insects and then it gradually closes around the insect and eats it up. Beech trees are very common in the new forest. Some of them are hundreds of years old. This one will be several hundred years old and at some stage it had its top cut off. It's called pollarding. Because there are lots of animals grazing in the new forest, they can graze to about this height. So if you want your tree to keep growing and you want to keep getting wood off it, if you cut off all the branches at this level, the animals can't nibble them, but you then have the wood that you can use for making things or keeping your fire burning. The other common tree is oak. And both these trees have been growing in the forest for thousands of years. There's also fauna, animals in the forest. The big animals, apart from deer, have all been wiped out. There are no bears now and there's no wild boar. But you get snakes. This is a nice harmless grass snake. And this one is the only venomous snake, the only one that can actually uh, inject you with a venom and kill you. This is the adder. The adder has a sort of diamond or V-shape down its back. It's often called a viper. This one's having a nice little meal here. It'll swallow that hole and then lay back and digest it for some time. Other fauna, we have lizards, little tiny lizards in the sandy heathland areas. And of course, there's the deer, which there are lots of. There's red deer, and these are fallow deer. There's also 
uh, mount jack deer and seeker deer but the fallow deer and the red deer are the main deer that you'd see in the forest lots of birds hundreds of different species here we've got a bird of prey which i think is a buzzard and this is a woodpecker it's pecked a hole and in there will be a nest with its babies in humans have had the biggest impact on the forest just in this picture alone there are lots of activities that have shaped the landscape we've got the railway which cuts the forest in half there have to be special underpasses and bridges for the animals to cross there's a campsite here people go there for recreation and uh, camp there are paths that are being worn these are constantly changing as people tramp in different directions and as more and more people use the forest this starts to wear the forest away the roads again those roads that have been fenced cut the forest in half and stop the ponies traveling from one side to the other so on these roads there are underpasses at various places where they can go under the road come out the other side enclosures enclosures are where the forestry commission or a private landowner is trying to grow trees as a crop they don't want the animals to nibble them otherwise they might not grow so they put a big fence all the way around it's called an enclosure because you're keeping the trees in and the animals out if you have an enclosure that's to keep the animals in tumulus thousands of years of history are in the new forest a tumulus is a burial mound maybe Iron Age maybe Stone Age where some person has been buried with all their belongings in ancient times it's usually just a little mound now your computing target is to design and make a website giving useful information about the new forest you will need to know about the new forest you'll have to do some research organize the information and write the text it will have to be in your words you can use the information other people have written but you mustn't copy and paste it because that's their work that's copyrighted design the layout of the page it needs to be attractive it's no good having just lots and lots of text and a picture in the in the corner somewhere think about how it's going to be laid out and you need to have a bank of resources such as copyright free pictures those are pictures that you're allowed to use if people are have made them copyright only they are allowed to use them to help you I've made a questionnaire in the questionnaire as you find information you can put it in different headings so there's this one here there's a heading history of the forest so if you find anything about history write a sentence about it in there this one's about ponies if you find any information about ponies write a sentence in that space there you can keep flitting between the, the sections as you find your information you need to make sure though that you write it so that other people can understand what you've written because the idea is that all that information you put in will come out together so that all of you can use each other's information to make your website so be sensible because we can all see what you've written and we all know who's written it so good luck do the research find out all you can about the forest put it in that form so everyone can use your information and I'll show you how to make the website and go on to the next stage shortly have fun